It doesn't seem too far of a stretch to say that video game industry has somewhat of a sexism problem. We're not saying every title misrepresents females, but there are some. There are few companies in the video game industry who feel women shouldn't be protagonists, or even antagonists for that matter, because gamers won't be able to relate. These games make us feel like we're stuck in a much less progressive society. Do you like equal rights and fun? So do we. You should subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all our content and ring that bell to become part of our notification squad. Let's take a look at the 10 most sexist moments in gaming history. Tomb Raider – Younger Laura Croft The original Tomb Raider made feminists around the world join together in excitement and anticipation. Ah, sigh of relief because there was finally a female protagonist in a video game. Hopefully she'd be easy to relate to. It seemed like it was too good to be true, and that's probably because it was. No gamer could relate to Laura Croft unless they had a double D-sized bra and were trigger happy. Laura Croft has been the discussion of quite a bit of controversy, but why are people complaining? Probably because she's a genuine action hero with brains and beauty, but did they really have to add the overly large pointed bust to get their point across. Why couldn't she just be normally proportional? Laura Croft was brought back in 2013 as a younger version of herself. Apparently, she was too old in the original one. She borders the line between being a symbol of female empowerment and the object of men's fantasies. You know what was on the mind of the teenager that made up the naked Laura Croft glitch rumor. And if you don't know, well, it isn't hard to guess. We're happy to see Square Enix incorporating women into video games as protagonists, but we hope next time they'll add a bit more confidence and clothing to their character. Metroid Samus Bikini Ending Some people may argue Samus Aran of Metroid is the feminist hero, but it's not exactly accurate when you think about her role in video games. Yes, she is viewed as one of the first female protagonists ever created, unless you count Miss Pac-Man, but here's where things take a turn for the worse. Samus plays as the hero in Metroid, but for most of the game, you have no idea she's a female character. She is a hidden identity, and we wonder if it isn't already catering to a slanted audience of male-dominated gamers during the time. As if it isn't enough to add insult to injury, the game is beaten in a certain time frame, Samus will basically undress as a reward. Women being used as rewards in video games isn't a new concept. It may have been new back in 1986. What Metroid created was the ability for it to be okay to tell gamers if they beat certain levels or time constraints, they would be rewarded with their biggest desires. Or in this case, a bikini-clad Samus Aran. We would have been okay if she just stayed in her suit, but she did open up the world for female protagonists. We just wish she would have done it without being used as a reward in the end. Lollipop Chainsaw – Scantily Clad Murderer Machine Where do we even start with Lollipop Chainsaw? Is there an award for the most sexist game in video game history? Because it might just go to these guys – and scantily clad gals. We're not trying to laugh at the extent of the misogyny in Lollipop Chainsaw. Is it trying to be funny? If it's a satirical look at the scary movie genre, it's one of the best stabs at the horror industry we've ever witnessed. The game focuses on Juliet, who lives in a world overrun by zombies, in which she has to murder them in the goriest way possible, while wearing the shortest cheerleader outfit we've ever seen. Maybe she stole her outfit from a child right before the zombies took over the planet, and she's worried if she changes her clothes, she'll become one. It's kind of like those football fanatics who don't wash their jerseys for months because they fear their team won't make the playoffs if they do. Anyways, if Juliet is happy fighting hordes of zombies in miniskirts with nothing but a chainsaw and terrible one-liners, then I guess we shouldn't complain too much. And it might be better if the gameplay weren't so bland and unsatisfying, as the main character looked like Maggie from The Walking Dead. Witcher – One Night Stand Romance Cards The Witcher series is no stranger to nudity in the video gaming world, but it really boosted the egos of sex-starved teens everywhere when it introduced the concept of romance cards rewards after one night stands with various women in the game. What you were doing was no secret either. Ah, to be young and misogynistic again. The game offered 20 different sexual encounters, including some with attractive nurses and the town hall clerk. We're sure things were really heated with the half-elf woman as well. These women just drop their trousers and are ready to party the second and they're rescued, which seems to be a common theme with all women in this game. At least the game panned away from showing any explicit content, and we only got to hear the half-hearted moans and underpaid female voice actresses pretending to have a good time. Monogamy isn't going to be too high on the list of a game which rewards your bad behavior towards women. If your idea of a good time is collecting cards of a one-night stand and then joyfully looking at all those encounters, then hey, so be it. The Witcher 3 introduced us to the most uncomfortable-looking time between man and woman on a wooden unicorn. Well, at least they're being creative in their sex this game.
Rings of Power Topless Women Cheat We're sure J.R.R. Tolkien would have loved to sue Naughty Dog for copyright infringement when they released the Rings of Power. Then again, the literary genius didn't have time for smut in video games. Sadly, the only reason people ever remember Rings of Power is because it's quite possibly the first game to ever introduce nudity to video games. The RPG was meant to be children's entertainment. It was meant to immerse gamers in a world much like Tolkien created in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. The goal was for the young sorcerer to collect 11 Rings of Power and use them to remake the rod of creation to defeat an evil god and bring back the golden age. Naughty Dog didn't strive too hard on this one as far as creativity goes. It was no Crash Bandicoot. What they did do to make the game a little more interesting was add a scene where the model in the beginning of the game is featured topless. Rings of Power ended up being a pretty good seller for the Sega Genesis, although once again, it was no Crash Bandicoot. It did receive some poor reviews since it isn't exactly the most original RPG game ever created, but what it lacked in creativity, it made up for a misogyny with the inclusion of the topless women cheat code. Skyrim – Confronting the Harlot Helga one thing most players who play Skyrim had in common was they loved to regale you with tales of their awesome deeds in the game. In a world as expansive as Skyrim, it was hard to even fathom how they couldn't have included some sexist quest in there somewhere. Eventually, someone would have to stumble across it. And trust us, it wasn't too hard to find when you reached the city of Riften. There, you would have to meet an innkeeper by the name of Helga and her niece, Savannah. The niece complains to you of her aunt's nightly duties and is unamused her aunt gets more attention. She ends up charging you to find proof her aunt has been sleeping with a bunch of men so she can rub her her nose in it. You probably agree half-heartedly because it's not like you have more important things to do. Then you get stuck basically stealing men's sex tokens and shaming the business owner into not having sexual encounters with whoever she deems worthy. Unless she wants to face the puritanical rage of the townsfolk, who would probably be less than kind to her immoral actions than what happened in Salem, Massachusetts. A sexist hero's job well done, if we do say so ourselves. Vampire The Masquerade Pimpin' for Romero yeah, if the title didn't imply it, the game is actually about werewolves. Huh. Also, did we mention you're a modern-day vampire stuck in the world of the undead and all its weird politics? The werewolves are opposed to urban civilization and supernatural corruption because it will inevitably lead to the apocalypse. Things are just too bizarre in this game, but it has a pretty epic storyline, all things considered. Now, things get pretty strange when you get to the Pimpin' for Romero quest. Romero is a human who serves the vampires by fighting zombies. Yes, it's a little weird and he keeps popping up at the local cemetery. You really just shouldn't question anything in this game. He asks you to cover his shift, which seems pretty pretty innocent until he tells you he's meeting up with a prostitute. So in this instance, you're giving two choices depending on your gender. If you're a male, you can either battle a bunch of zombies or fetch a prostitute for Romero. If you're a female, things get a little bit more complicated. You can pimp yourself out to Romero. But hey, you get some experience points and a few shotgun shells out of the deal. Anything to get out of doing Romero's dirty work will do, even misogyny and necrophilia. Police Knots Molest Merrill Police Knots has a pretty hard sci-fi storyline, and it's close to what we'd imagine a lethal weapon movie in space would be like. The game centers on a detective who travels around and ends up in a space colony to investigate some pretty bizarre circumstances. This includes his ex-wife's murder and her new husband's sudden disappearance. The game focuses on the main character, Jonathan Ingram, as he interacts with his environment in a point-and-click style. He meets fellow cop, Meryl Silverberg, and things get a little interesting. She isn't very modest about her amazing skills and even makes a bargain with the main character. She's known as the best shooter her on the force so she's confident enough to agree to let you cop a feel if you somehow beat her in target practice score. It isn't going to be easy to beat, so she most likely only made the bet with the intention of winning. But the fact that you're allowed to basically molest her if you beat her score is just sexism at its finest. Well, she did make the bet after all, right? The most bizarre part is if you do beat the score and get a squeeze, you'll hear animal noises, which kind of makes us wonder what the Japanese developers have been doing in their free time. Harvest Moon 3 Female character means game over. If you're gonna play Harvest Moon, then you better make sure you don't choose to play as a female, because the developers have snuck a not-so-entertaining addition in there. Unless you want to deal with sexism and their opinion on women and agriculture, don't choose a female character. To start off, the male character gets more stamina, which means he can accomplish much more on the farm every day. The girl has to quit early to get some beauty sleep and fix her hair. Also, the male gets to upgrade his farm tool and get the girl. Well, she gets what she has and shouldn't complain, right? Not only do they make the game harder to play as a female character, but if you play as a boy, and get married, the game will keep going even though you have a family. If you do the same thing as a female character, it's basically game over. So don't plan on having kids unless you want to be a 1950s housewife for the rest of your days. Apparently, it's impossible for you to balance both a family life and work life, so the end credits have you sitting in front of a television while your husband does all the hard labor. Guess we'll just all watch daytime soaps and hope Harvest Moon develops a less slanted opinion of females. Final Fantasy 15 All-Male Party 
Final Fantasy has brought about a new idea of the men's club, a group of emo guys who go around hunting monsters together. That's edgy and all, but there aren't a whole lot of females in sight. For some, this makes Final Fantasy XV seem a bit, well, one-sided as far as characters go. The Final Fantasy series itself has a pretty extensive history of including strong female characters, so we're kind of wondering what went wrong here. The developers should have known better than to not include a female as part of the group. There's no excuse for having an all-male party, whether it's for Japanese gamers or those in the West. It's also been discussed that Final Fantasy developers know their main demographic is female, so in exchange, they created a group made up entirely of men. This seems kinda backwards as far as where we come from, but it is true a huge demographic lies in Japan's women. This might be why the newest characters look like they're straight out of a boy band. Japan is no stranger to the fluidity of gender roles. Take for example Kabuki Theater, where the man plays both the role of male and female. We just hope that next time they'll remember girls don't always change the dynamic of the group or gameplay. What are some blatantly obvious sexist games we may have missed? Are there any games you wish would include more female or male roles? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and we hope you'll subscribe to our channel and keep fighting the good fight.